Hey friend, I'm Michael McCurry, and this is the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. I greatly appreciate you taking your time to be with me on this program today. I'm here, you're here, I've even got a gospel track for us to talk about. I'm looking forward to what God has for us this week. Actually, the thought for this week came out of my Bible reading a couple of weeks ago, maybe just two weeks ago. I was reading, I've started back over in the book of Genesis, and if you'll find your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 17, that's where we will begin today. I'm looking forward to speaking to you, but I'd love to hear from you. You know, it's a little bit lonely sitting here in the Bible Tracks Incorporated building talking to you through this microphone. Sometimes it's nice to hear back from those in the audience, and you can communicate with me in a myriad of ways. One way is to text me. I'll tell you why you might want to text me in just a moment. The first reason that you might want to text me is because you are praying for the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. There are so many people under the sound of my voice that pray for BTI. You can text me at 309 316 That number is 309 316 Zero. Another reason you might text me is because you have questions about the ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated, or maybe you're planning on coming to our open house, our grand opening on Saturday, October 1st of this very year. In just a few short weeks, a couple short weeks, I'm looking forward to seeing so many of you and your smiling faces right here in Odell, Illinois. We're excited about the opportunity to throw our doors open to people just like you. Saturday, October 1st, our grand opening. Now, those of you that have the opportunity to view the video version of this broadcast will notice that my surroundings are just a little bit different. But for the radio listeners, let me share with you what's going on. Right now, I'm sitting in what we call the Paul Levine Memorial Room, or the shortened name is the Founders Room. You know our founder, Dr. Paul Levine, he passed away in 1996, but for over 60 years of his life, he served God faithfully as an evangelist, an itinerant preacher, preaching here, there, and everywhere, predominantly across the Midwest. And Dr. Paul stayed in a lot of what we call prophets' chambers, stayed in a lot of people's homes. And so here at the brand new BTI building, we have what we call the Founders Room and kind of an homage to our founder. We call it that. And the opportunity is uh, in placed in our trust to offer this room to traveling preachers and things of that nature. I'd love to hear from you if you have more questions about the Founders Room, but you can see it for yourself instead of just hearing me describe it or talk about it or even through the lens of a camera. We'd love to see you. Saturday, October 1st, from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time. If you have questions, again, that phone number where you can text me is 309-316-7240. Would love to hear from you. I have with me a gospel tract. This gospel tract was printed for the first time many years ago. It's called transform. I even very recently just heard from the daughter of the person about whom this tract is written. You see, there is inside this gospel tract the story of a man named Don Price. Well, he has a daughter named Becky, and she contacted me just a few short days ago to tell us, to tell me how much she appreciates us printing and using this gospel tract for the gospel's sake. There's so many people that have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as a result of the testimony in this gospel tract, this story of how a man's life was transformed from drunkenness to adoration and a love for God, from vice to salvation. This gospel tract tells that story, and maybe you, listener right now, maybe you would say you're struggling with some things. Maybe you might not even call yourself an addict. Maybe you'd say, I I'm just struggling with some different things, and I'd like to hear about how God can transform my life. Well, 
this gospel tract is for you. You can find it on our website at BibleTractsInc.org. BibleTractsInc.org. While you're there, if you've never used any of our materials before, I'd recommend getting one of our sample booklets as well. This sample booklet will explain to you uh, about our ministry. It'll also contain a short, a short description of every single one of the gospel tracts that we currently produce and put around the world free of charge. Go to BibleTracksInc.org to order this sample booklet today. Now, have you found your place in the book of Genesis, chapter number 17? Genesis 17, and let's look at verse number 15. Genesis 17 and verse number 15. The Bible says this, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shalt her name be. Many of you would be familiar with at least this occurrence in the Bible of Abram having his name changed to Abraham and his wife Sarai having her name changed to Sarah. And this is where it happens in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse number 16, though the Bible continues and God continues speaking to Abraham. What, what an amazing thing to be spoken to by God. Verse 16, and I will bless her. And give thee a son also of her, yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then, and get this, this is the response that Abraham gives to God Almighty. What, what would you do if God was speaking to you? Would you fall on your face in worship? Would you clasp your hands together? There's a, an old psalm that says, I, I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory, glory to the Son of God. Would that be our response? Or would we do what Abraham did? What did he do? Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. He laughed at what God said. Now, God is not a comedian. God was being very serious when he said that Sarah, your wife, is going to bear a son. Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old. Now, that's a little factoid for us. Abraham was a hundred years old as this story is being recounted to us here in the book of Genesis. And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear, meaning bear a child. Verse number 19, and God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. What an amazing account of a promise of God, a promise that God makes good on. God has made good on every promise he's ever given. Here's the thought today. God wants to use you. Now, there are times on this Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast that there are different themes, different thoughts, different purposes for which I sit down behind this microphone and speak to you. But today, as has been in previous weeks, my singular goal, my only desire is to be an encouragement. If you feel a little bit of conviction, well, we'll chalk that up to the Holy Spirit. But my desire is to encourage you with the fact that God wants to use you. Oh, blessed thought. Think about that. God wants to use you. And we begin today with this thought that in spite, despite your disabilities, God wants to use you. You know, today it's a sad thing that age is often seen as a disability. Now, I understand that with advanced age, there are some things you can no longer do. I think of my, the woman that my children call Gigi, their great grandma. Of course, my parents, my, uh, my, uh, my Chris and Ruth McCurry, then my wife's parents are Dan and Cindy Woodward. And then Dan Woodward, my father-in-law, his mother is Gigi to my children. She is right now on hospice, dealing with some physical things and don't need to go into details to, for you to understand what I'm talking about. But it's amazing to see her even still 
pull out her prayer journal, her prayer book. It's really a binder filled with cards that she has filled out or that people have filled out about their family, about their lives, about who they are. And she'll sit there for hours. Now, is her concentration what it once was when she was praying for three and four hours a day, even into her 70s and 80s? Maybe not. But can I tell you, God is still using that woman, despite what we would call advanced years. God is using her in a marvelous way. Friend, can I tell you, despite your perceived disabilities, think of Abraham. The Bible tells us that Abraham was 100 years old when this promise came. Sarah was 90 years old when this promise came. And yet... I think of that song as anything too hard for God. There's no problem that he can't solve. Friend, let me encourage you. I I don't know what disability you may already be bringing to mind or that the wicked one is already offering to you, tempting you with. But can I tell you, God can use you. Now, it may not be that God will give you the blessing of a child in, in your 80, 90, or 100th year. That certainly is a little bit outside the realm of the norm. But can I tell you there's a myriad of ways that God can and will and, should I say, wants to use you? The problem is that we often approach God's promises with the same reaction that Abraham did, whether outwardly or inwardly. We laugh. Look at Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord, verse number one, appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he, meaning Abraham, lifted his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he continues on, these three men who we believe are a representation, or at least one of them was the Lord, a Christophany, a pre-New Testament appearing of Jesus Christ. And they said unto him, verse 9, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. Verse 10, And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. And what did she do? She laughed as well. Friend, why is it that we so distrust that God wants and will use us? We're going to continue this thought, this theme in the coming days. I'm going to encourage you to join us right here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast for the remainder of this week because we are going to look at, despite certain things in our lives, God wants to and will use us. My prayer is that you have a great day for His glory. God bless.